Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all having a great day and that you are all doing well. There's a lot of news, like an astronomical amount. This isn't even all of it. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump right into it. The other day, global remittance giant Western Union published a video with a shocking announcement that they stand ready to support cryptocurrencies. In the video, President Odilon Almeida stated... We already operate with 130 currencies and went on to say that if they feel like adopting crypto, then technology wise, it's just another currency. This goes right back to the report that was published yesterday showing how interest in crypto adoption is very high, but still education is lagging. That's an understatement. The post from uh, Western Union did not go unnoticed by the community. Of course not. And crypto enthusiasts were only too happy to point out the entire crypto. Po the point of cryptocurrencies was that they can be sent without the need of a third party. Got it. One thing that might be helpful here is that Western Union is still in a partnership with Ripple Labs and are conducting an ongoing pilot to see how XRP can streamline things for them. The good people from Dash were also quick to respond with a video of their own. This has been news for quite a bit of time. We've known it was Western Union and MoneyGram that were uh, testing X Rapid. I think it was uh, MoneyGram who came forward and said that they, uh, th th this was months and months ago, that they uh, probably were not going to be uh, using Ripple's technology and or uh, X Rapid for their platform. And this was a video, obviously, that I made months ago. And it was really interesting. I said, this is once again why I love the internet, because you can find information very quick. And when you looked at MoneyGram's uh, system and exactly how their uh, payment fees went, sometimes they were charging uh, people who were trying to send money around the world anywhere from 10 to 25% of their money. And if you looked at the cost of using XRP slash X Rapid, it came down to, I think, like a, 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 a tenth of one cent. Uh, so there's a major difference inside there. The fact that Western Union has now openly come out to say that they are thinking of supporting cryptocurrencies uh, is major news. I'm going to go out on a limb, me, myself, personally, and I assume this is my assumption. Uh, we are probably going to get information from Western Union, and I want to say in 2019, I think this may be a precursor to exactly what is going to happen in the future. I, you know, when you when you're a major for, for Western Union, for those who are unaware who don't live on Earth, uh, is a major company. They are all around the entire planet. They are extremely rich, well off. Uh, they're they they make money. I don't know how to really phrase that otherwise. Uh, so this is probably completely coordinated in them making this announcement that they're planning on uh, maybe potentially giving ready to support uh, cryptocurrencies. I'm going to say that we're probably going to have some type of an announcement that they are probably going to be using X Rapid, uh, maybe not within the United States or maybe other jurisdictions where this is not possible. But I would not be surprised if they came forward. You know, if you make an announcement like this, you kind of come forward and say, uh, we have looked into it and we are definitely ready uh, to accept or start using XRP or X Rapid as our payment method. The fact that they're talking about cryptocurrencies in general leads me to believe that we are probably going to get into a situation where they are going to announce that they are probably going to accept XRP, Bitcoin, I want to say maybe Litecoin, probably not Ethereum, just an inkling, and maybe even Dash as well. Regardless, even if it's just one or all four of these, I think it's still a major win for cryptocurrencies. The 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 extra added liquidity that we will be able to have and the the namesake that will be pushed around the world, like Dash is already becoming popular in many other countries because it is seen as a quicker or sometimes less expensive alternative to actually using Bitcoin. And if we start having a situation where places like Western Union have stickers on their walls as people are walking in from all around the world who are trying to send money to their friends and family and coworkers, whatever, how people send money, uh, and they start seeing uh, the words XRP or the words Dash or the word Litecoin, these become everyday household names then. Uh, the point is, uh, they made this announcement. It is actually incredibly exciting. I'm going to assume as we are at the end of the year at this point, they're probably going to have a finalized announcement at the beginning of 2019 for exactly which coins they're going to be using. One can only assume that they are probably going to... The, the reason why I say X Rapid is like they've been testing it since this was like the end of last year. Uh, I feel like we would have he heard some type of negative press from them about X Rapid and or Ripple and or XRP um, over that course of time. And they wouldn't have come out publicly stating that they were going to accept cryptocurrencies if they had had problems with testing one of the uh, or probably the only uh, cryptocurrency brand team coin 
that they have been testing for quite some time. Going to be very interesting. Once again, hits that uh, 2019 time frame that everyone's uh, waiting for and um, has been anticipating for quite some time. The downtrend in the market has not obviously gone unnoticed by all of the institutions who are talking about getting into the cryptocurrency space but i feel and i have felt for quite some time 2018 was like a uh let's push prices down period so we you can get them back up in 2019 and everything seems to be once again converging you all notice it as well there's far too much good news happening in any other given situation of anything around the world, if we had a situation where the price of something had been dropping, the prices of things had been dropping for a 12-month period, everyone would have jumped ship, left, said, I'm never touching this thing again. But lo and behold, uh, prices have been going down for about 360-something days, and we have all this um, hyper-attention still paid around cryptocurrencies, especially when we have institutions talking about that they are willing to accept cryptocurrencies, even in the market that has been falling quite interesting right next up uh if you want some really confusing news here we go they said after much deliberation the hydro foundation has decided to fork the zero x protocol removing the zrx or i guess the zero x token in the process this was said by ceo tian Li. this was revealed in a blog post Li, who is also the ceo of decentralized cryptocurrency exchange ddex or ddex Noted that Zero X's contribution to the growth of DDEX, but pointed to rudimentary problems such as order collision, front running, and poor liquidity as factors prompting the team to decide on a fork of the protocol. The CEO further explained that the Zero X token would have to be removed as it would cause unnecessary friction. Essentially, the Hydra Foundation has rewritten a large portion of the Zero X code base, creating a new order scheme, an engine capable of true matching robust market orders and a fundamentally different liquidity sharing model end quote the new the new protocol will be called hydro uh with its main focus being on increased liquidity hydro was initially designed as a thin liquidity incentive layer on top of the zero x uh the foundation has decided to keep the name but expand the scope of the project the fork will not feature an equivalent to the zero x token uh where is the other important part uh, for those who don't know, it says the 0x token was recently listed on uh, Coinbase. Uh, this is where I kind of get the confusion from. If they are forking the protocol and no longer going to be uh, using the 0x token, I wonder exactly what this effect is going to have on the actual coin. I don't know if they're just simply rebranding it uh, to call the new coin Hydro. Or if the entire protocol is just going to be called Hydro, and especially if they're stating that on the Zero X protocol, if they're going to be getting rid of the Zero X token, which has just been listed on Coinbase, what does that then mean for the coin that was just listed on Coinbase? Oh, uh, yeah, that's why I said if you want some confusing news, uh, there you go. Apparently, this is going to happen. Uh, I personally, myself, do not keep track of Zero uh, X, uh, probably as often as I do the other top fifteen coins. And it's just because I'm human. Uh, someone noted in, in the comment section, I think my last video, the video before that, uh, that they were shocked that I didn't know uh, that you needed, I think, one um, ADA or one Cardano token in order to be able to stake on the network. Uh, while I like Cardano, Cardano is not my favorite project. And it's impossible, even as a, a crypto may be my life. Uh, you have to understand, I also like free time. And while I may read about crypto all day, I can't know every single aspect of every single cryptocurrency project is just completely not possible anyway uh that is the zero x news if you kind of want to call it that um pay attention if you have any zero x tokens or if you have bought them on coinbase recently i guess i want to say pay attention to exactly what's going on maybe this is uh something a lot smaller than we think it is but when you talk about eliminating the zero x token that was just put onto coinbase uh that is a red flag for me next up iota is in the news in a recent blog post published by alias mas the head of mobility and automotive at the iota foundation they informed that they had positive results after a five-month collaboration with audi the intention was to present the results of their project to interested interested investors and individuals um, iota and audi have recently announced that their five-month collaboration had a positive effect on both companies they were able to provide information about the benefits of exploring new solutions with blockchain technology and with iota 
Audi Denkwerk Start and the IOTA Foundation explored IOTA's technology to solve different problems relating to mobility, automotive, automotive, and Internet of Things. During the first part of the project, the Audi team focused on research and interviewing domain experts and defining and describing the problem and solution space. Okay, the second phase saw experts work in stealth mode to focus on finalizing the prototype. They were collecting their user feedback and more. Got it. Um, Alisa Alisa Maas commented on the issue stating, during the time an IOTA Foundation team acted as consultants on a regular basis on topics like technology, use cases, and business models, both sides learned from each other's expertise and contributed to the final results of the project, end quote. IOTA has been working in the past with many other companies all over the world. The electronics giant company Bosch has also partnered with IOTA in order to launch a new device for Internet of Data Things, Data Collection. Uh, once again, and I'll repeat this one more time, uh, every single time that we get some type of a news about IOTA's partnerships, it typically comes down to them talking about IOTA's technology. And I told you guys before, this is this is now the seventh or eighth time. Uh, I love that IOTA has new partnerships. That's wonderful. That's great. But every single time that we get news in any capacity about IOTA and what they're doing and who they're partnered with, the same phrase is always used. It's always IOTA's technology. People have argued with me in the comment section that uh, the use of technology means that they are going to be using IOTA's token and not just their Tangle. Um, many other cryptocurrency projects have the ability you are able to use their uh, in this case, Tangle or blockchain without the actual use of the token. Uh, every time, like I said, that I read this over and over, multiple different projects and multiple different collaborations, it constantly comes down to the fact that they are going to be using their Tangle or their technology as opposed to their actual token. But on the other side, I can definitely see how at least the company should in some sort of way be thinking at least maybe possibly of using, if using their technology, maybe just use their token as well to be able to pay for things that you are trying to do, especially if it comes down to the internet of things. Um, IOTA's main goal is to try and become the token for the internet of things that is going to be used as your toaster is talking to your car and your car is talking to your wash machine, uh, telling you that you need more soap or something like that. Uh, I assume that at some point, you know, when we have multiple partnerships, uh, something nice should happen for IOTA as far as like price wise, I kind of want to say. Uh, but when it comes down to it, like you, I'm not the only one who notices this. I, I think other people in the comment section, uh, I don't know. Like I, I, I really can't put my finger on it. Like every single time I've read through something or have researched something about IOTA, I've, I've looked before to see if people are actually going to be using their token. Uh, you may have also realized, you know, while we're going through these things that there's never any mention of, yeah, while they're using their technology, they also plan on integrating their cryptocurrency in order to be able, there's never any mention of that. Uh, so it's wonderful for them that they have all these partnerships. I hope that they continue to uh, succeed and I guess exceed other people's expectations. Uh, but I would like to, I guess, see at some point people using their actual token. But like I said, uh, you one would assume uh, that there has been talk about integration of the actual uh, cryptocurrency itself. But yeah, let's move on. So I thought this one, sorry, I thought this one was actually uh, very, very good. A digital asset strategist for New York-based veteran investment management firm Vanek is pretty irate that there is still no exchange-traded fund for Bitcoin. In response to a tweet by Matt O'Dell, who was saying how Coinbase is risking its regulatory moat by addition by adding uh, several altcoins over the past weeks, Gabor Gorbax, the guy right here. Uh, the top executive who is pushing for Van X ETF went on, went off the handle, tweeted. For those who aren't looking at the screen, he said, uh, Coinbase SHIT coins, okay for millions of retail investors. Bitcoin ETF somehow is institutional, uh, is, is, is just too crazy for institutional investors. What effing parallel universe is this? Uh, he categorically used the words, word SHIT coins. In regards to several tokens that Coinbase had added in the platform in recent months, including BAT, Ethereum Classic, and Zcash, in the past era, he might have been widely lauded for his Bitcoin maximalism. But in present times, Bitcoin dominance is far from a settled fact. According to recent statements by the head of the SEC, the biggest thing holding back the approval of a Bitcoin ETF is the lack of adequate investor protections. In their view, in crypto markets, 
He also alleged that there is a higher risk of market manipulation in crypto markets and a recent investigation into Tether and Bitfinex parallels this idea. Gordabox followed up his tweet by going more on the offensive against regulators that the coin that coin about the coins that Coinbase has been offering. He said, I am close to going off. The effery must end. The current treatment of well-designed Bitcoin vehicle proposals is beyond unreasonable. The gray area activity that most of us fight against are caused by the description against regulated products. Self-purge is on the way. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the only one who's frustrated by all of this. I've I've held back, and I'm pretty sure you've noticed in many other videos before when I was talking about the, the Bitcoin ETF. Like, first of all, the, the, the point that we don't even actually need a Bitcoin ETF, that there was so much... Uh, it's too many people focusing on a, on a Bitcoin ETF, but the fact come down to it, like, it doesn't matter. Just launch a Bitcoin ETF. I can only, I mean, I mean, and I can completely understand where this guy is coming from because imagine trying to launch something for years. Uh, imagine a, a four-year period going by and people keep telling you no, and then they tell you what you have to fix in your proposal for an ETF, and then you bring it to them and they go, Nope, you're missing this sentence. And you go back a couple months later and bring them that same exact sentence, especially when the SEC has it in there right uh, to be able to be like, okay, we're going to, uh, today's the, you know, when we have to decide, but we're going to, we're going to give it three more months. We're going to, we're going to give it three more months to look over. It doesn't take three months to look over about 16 pieces of paper and then to know they, they know in their hearts that they were going to say no every single time. It's nice to hear that someone uh, from Van Eck is actually, uh, lashing out about this because i can only you know it has to be incredibly frustrating it's frustrating for me um i still firmly believe in my um humblest of humble opinions that this is all completely coordinated there's no reason for them not to give a thumbs up to uh a bitcoin etf or any other bitcoin product at this point if you want to talk about a lack of liquidity in the market a lack of trust in the market how about launching something with a major company like van eck um that with C sec approval has then been legitimized legitimized no that's not a word legitimized in the I, I, it just it's just complete complete madness if we don't have an etf by the end of 2019 uh someone then needs to do some type of an investigation into the sec or something like that because it's the 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 holding back of something like this just puts more hype around it and then we 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 could have been completely past this as a community already like we could have been on to some other topic or discussion Anyway, I thought that was quite interesting that uh, this guy kind of was cursing on Twitter because it's it's a frustrating situation. Like I I am optimistic about the future of not only Bitcoin but other cryptocurrencies in 2019, but the lack of understanding and the lack of caring from actual regulatory bodies is part of the reason why we have cryptocurrencies. Like it's part of the reason and I wish this was only possible not to go off on a tangent, but I wish it was kind of possible to just like have like AI or something like that, or like robots who kind of like made the laws or made the rules. And I know that sounds a bit out there uh, because it is. Uh, but the point is, it doesn't take just to whatever. Uh, I've always been very frustrated, especially when I was growing up, because as a kid, you kind of see things on the news and you assume that adults will uh, get it together and kind of not regulate things, but kind of you know what needs to be done and kind of just do it so we can kind of move on. It doesn't take four years to approve something. It doesn't take five or six years to think about the possibility. Imagine if we had done this four years ago, how much further the cryptocurrency space would have been and how much more legitimacy would have actually been inside of the cryptocurrency markets if governments kind of got it together. Once again, I mean, depending on what side of the the grass you're standing on, I don't think that's a phrase either. Uh, it kind of comes down to if you think the markets are being manipulated or if you think or rather, you know, like the, the higher ups are manipulating crypto as best they can or you kind of think that it's just... Um, a lack of interest in the market, and therefore, so and so and so. I, 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 I think it's more the manipulation side. Uh, but I, humanity could be so much farther ahead if we didn't have to wait years for politicians or people in positions of power to kind of give us a thumbs up on things that don't really even matter. It's kind of ridiculous. Anyway, let's move on. Something that uh, shocked me earlier when I found this was, uh, you'll see, it's kind of. Like, all of it together is very weird. It says there will be a total of 18.4 million Moneros, or XMR, coins in circulation by the 31st of May in the year 2022. And the project has already mined more than 90% of their tokens. For those who didn't get that, 
90% of all the Monero in the world have now been mined. And the final ones will be on the 31st of May, 2020. Keep that in 2022. Keep that in mind. Per data available at MoneroBlocks.info and Monero Blockchain Explorer, the privacy-enabled cryptocurrency has emitted close to 16.6 million XMR. An emission forms parity with the total supply. The Monero project will switch to a new supply program dubbed as Tail Emission. The project's early announcement indicate that miners will obtain a consistent mining reward of 0.6 Monero per block that would likely maintain the overall security and integrity of Monero's blockchain. They said miners need an incentive to mine because of the dynamic block size. Competition between miners will cause fees to decrease. They said if mining is not profitable, profitable, profitable due to a high cost and low reward, miners lose their incentive and will stop mining, reducing the security of the network. Similar to Bitcoin's mo working model, Monero also reduces the supply of XMR tokens that are thrown into circulation through mining. As of now, the project offers the reward of 3.41 XMR per block, and it is programmed to go lower with each block until it reaches 0 0.6, down from 3.41. Where's the other? Here's the most interesting part. Monero's tail emission plan somewhat attempts to challenge the token supply mechanism of Bitcoin the world's leading digital currency by adoption and market cap. Bitcoin Network will mine a total of 21 million coins in its lifetime. However, by the year 2040, that is 22, 21 years away at this point, it will have drilled 99.8% of all Bitcoin, while the remaining 0.2% of Bitcoin that will ever be mined will be spread out across the next 100 years. That all of this completely threw me for a loop. Like Monero isn't something that's in the news very often. I'm pretty sure you've noticed that. I've definitely noticed that. I told you guys before when it comes to uh, the privacy coins, they're not typically in the news that often. There's never usually a lot of news from their uh, makers, creators, project manager persons uh, talking about the project and what new updates they have. Like we'll get information on the actual updates, uh, but it's never anything really concrete. So they're never typically in the news that often. The point is, this is incredibly interesting. Uh, on top of not even, we, we are all also kind of close to it. Litecoin's reward is being cut in half next year. That's also a topic of discussion. Uh, the fact that Monero, all of the Monero will be mined by the middle of 2022 is kind of insane to think about because you make you think it's far away, but it's really not. And I thought about the prospect of how long it would take to mine all of the Bitcoin before. The constant discussion was is that by the year 2140, we would have the last Bitcoin and people are like, okay, well, you know, that's great. You know, my my great, great grandkids will be able to see the event. And then you kind of think, especially when you have information like this in, what is it, 20, 21 years and some days, 99.8% of all the Bitcoin that will ever be, will be completely mined. If Bitcoin ends up taking off as a thing, you know, Bitcoin has taken off, but if we get to those uh, crazy price predictions that we've had before. I'm not going to mention any of them because some of them are just too wacky and out there. Imagine what will happen. You know, it's it's already relatively difficult to be able to uh, mine Bitcoin or get Bitcoin or especially when we have the, the event in 2020 where the reward also gets cut in half. That's also going to be quite interesting. Imagine if I, I hope, fingers crossed, that we're all still here by the year 2040. Uh, what kind of a world would we be living in? And I I shudder to even mention other things that I've read before. Uh, but it kind of leads me to some, I don't know. It's a very interesting thought. If Bitcoin does become this rare, hyper rare commodity uh, that people have been talking about that by the year, we have, you know, time frames anywhere from three to five years. Let's say a rough, heavily rough estimate by the year 2023 to 2025. And Bitcoin becomes, cryptocurrencies in general become this big thing. Let's just focus on Bitcoin because it's in the article. Becomes this major, extremely, you know, rare, crazy, hyper overpriced, oh my gosh, we're using it for everything thing. And then as the years go on, the reward continues to get cut in half and having to wait. That's, I'm sorry, that's, that, 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 that's an insane thought to have 0.2% of all the Bitcoin being spread out over the course of 100 years. It's kind of a bit insane. I think there are also some other cryptocurrencies, not just Monero, that are also going to have their supply, um, I think, like done by the mid 2020s. Uh, that is also, I mean, obviously, this is all 
all of it. All speculation. Uh, a lot of, I mean, I wonder what the future price of a lot of these coins are going to be because uh, the rarity is definitely going to hit in at some point. Um, and I don't think we're that far away. Like 10 years has gone by in a blink of an eye almost from when Bitcoin was created. And these are going to be a lot of other things to kind of think about as well in the upcoming years. To kind of finish things off, uh, I'm going to speed through this one. Binance Labs recently announced the launch of eight projects, which have been incubated over the course of the last few months. The San Francisco chapter of Binance Labs ended its 10-week incubation period, which forced, oh, forced, which focused on providing guidance, mentorship, and resources to each project. Over 500 teams uh, applied for the program, and after an intensive review process, eight were selected and received half a million dollars each. The projects also received access to fireside talks from industry leaders, including Binance CEO Changpeng Cao. Ella Tsang, who is the head of Binance Labs, told CCN, and I do quote, in the long run, we aim to build up a strong blockchain ecosystem and network of biddlers. I know that's, I hate that word, builders around the world. Our first incubation program in San Francisco was an amazing experience, and we are grateful to the mentors, advisors, and friends who helped our biddlers during the 10 weeks we are very excited to expand our program each next season and meet with blockchain projects across five different continents scaling quickly that is binance speed and quote binance is aggressively trying to expand as quickly and as fast as possible uh the fact that I and i if this is the one that's making the news i wonder how many other projects that binance has been actually putting money into uh the people from binance if you uh look at their actual story binance launched not 2018 summer, but 2017 summer, and they became the number one cryptocurrency exchange in the world very, very fast. It was kind of in incredibly weird. Um, and because they've gotten so big, they have a lot of money now, obviously. And I can only imagine what other pro what other mo money they're putting into other projects. It's kind of like when you think of like Google and Amazon, how they like just kind of buy everything, like everything around them. I think Binance is also doing the exact same thing. I, I can only imagine that they're also trying to buy other uh, smaller cryptocurrency exchanges and pretty much incorporate them or kind of slap their sticker onto the brand. Anyway, uh, incredible news. Uh, Binance is, I don't think, going away anytime soon. They're incredibly intelligent people. I, I wonder who their marketing people are. I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if like uh, the main like seven people who run Binance are already the marketing people because everything they're doing is completely phenomenal. Anyway, uh, on the crypto prices front, uh, we're still doing okay. A uh, bit of a cool off right now. It's uh, kind of expected. You can't have, uh, you can't enter too hot too fast. Uh, it kind of causes things to completely crumble. There was another article I was reading about a day ago, maybe 18 hours ago, something like that, before I went to sleep. And they were talking about that they uh, think it's totally fine that prices are going up the way that they are now. Like 3%, like three percent, uh, you know, other smaller numbers are totally fine. Because uh, if we were having these every single day, this would be a huge cause for concern. And what we have right now is, I don't know if you guys have uh, caught it on the screen for those who aren't looking. Uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin Cash SV are being pumped like crazy. Uh, for those who aren't looking, it says Bitcoin Cash has been pumped by 145% over the last seven days. Bitcoin Cash SV is by 55%. Uh, to put it in the nicest way possible, there isn't enough news or hype around either one of these coins at the moment that should warrant such a huge boost. The entire thing that I, I, I get from it, or rather that I've gotten from it after reading around this, people are saying that uh, Bitcoin Cash was, I think, like $87, $60, some, $70, something like that, a couple of days ago, a week ago at this point. Um, if you look at Bitcoin Cash's all-time high, I believe it was like $4,000. So people are saying, logically, um, if the ecosystem has grown for the cryptocurrency space, these are their words, not mine. Please, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to go out of there and buy Bitcoin Cash. Believe me, it is probably one of my least favorite projects. However, the idea is, is that if it was at 80 before and it was at 4,000 last year, there's definitely room for major gains. But on that same exact note, these gains are a bit too high. There's no hype. Or rather, no one's even talking about Bitcoin Cash SV, except for maybe people who are in the Bitcoin Cash SV world. Uh, Bitcoin Cash has a, a, a bit more of a following. But even then, my personal opinion is I think that Bitcoin Cash has a following only because of the Bitcoin name. If it was called like Rat Hat Cash, no one would be paying attention to it. And also because uh, people got 
Bitcoin Cash for free from the Bitcoin fork. And it was like the first major publicized fork. Uh, people are more concerned with like keeping their coins safe in expectation that either in some parallel weird universe that uh, it could either become the number one coin or that it could become as valuable as it did before. And therefore, there are major gains to be made. So they say. But as of right now, the market seems to be doing okay. These aren't bad. We had very nice days across the entirety of the market. Um, it was needed. Uh, it was, I want to say, expected. Uh, we needed this very much so. So as of right now, everything seems to be doing pretty okay. I hope or assume, uh, rather assume and then hope, uh, that prices continue to go up. We are entering the weekend as of right now. And typically what we see as we enter the weekend is that prices uh, slump down a tiny bit. Even though crypto is a 24-hour market, for some reason, people like to take the weekends off. It's kind of weird. But let's hope they are just taking the weekend off and not taking an entire week and a half off. Anyway, I think that is definitely going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. This is still not all the news. I, I have at least like 35 other tabs. Not even joking. There's a lot of news that's happened in the last like 24-hour period. It's kind of insane. Thank you all once again for watching and listening. I do appreciate all of your support. I think it's I think it's actually all of the 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 Bitcoin forks that are kind of going insane. Bitcoin gold is up by forty percent. Where's the other one I just saw? Bitcoin diamonds up by there's there's no yeah. I think it's just all the Bitcoin uh, forks are kind of going insane at the moment. Anyway, thank you once again, and I will talk to you all soon. See you.